Thank you, Marcus. Um, now, like many good uh, journalists, Helen Pilcher has a rich past. She was Science and Society Manager at the Royal Society and then a reporter for Nature. She has a PhD in neuroscience and even put in time as a stem cell researcher. In recent years, uh, she has carved out a successful career as a freelance science writer and a performer. She writes serious science stuff for the likes of New Scientist and Nature and funny stuff for comedy shows. So I'm excited to find out which uh, alter ego she's brought along this evening. Uh, so here's Helen who's going to tell us about something called the nocebo effect. Aha, I have a clicker. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. Um, before I start, I'd like to start with a bit of a disclaimer. Um, this talk may cause nausea, just so you know. I've done this talk a few times, and a couple of times people have come up to me afterwards and said, uh, during the talk, I felt a little bit queasy. Nobody, as far as I know, has been physically sick, but a um, little bit queasy, a little bit uncomfortable. So just so that you know, nausea is a possible side effect of my talk. So I want to start by telling you a story. And it's the story of a man called Vance Vanders. And I should say, this is a true story. And it's set about 80 years ago in the deep southern states of America in Alabama. Now, late one night, Vance Vanders was walking home. And he decided to take a shortcut through a graveyard. Now, if you've watched Scooby-Doo, you'll know that's a very bad idea. Never do that. Something bad will happen. Now, sure enough, as he was walking through the graveyard, he bumped into a witch doctor. It may have looked a little bit like this one from Scooby-Doo, but probably a bit more real. So he genuinely, he bumped into a witch doctor, and they got into a fight. They had an argument. Now, we don't know the exact content of the argument, but we do know that the witch doctor pulled out a bottle with some really strange-smelling stuff in it, and he wafted it in front of Vance Vander's face. And it, it smelt absolutely awful. And the witch doctor said to him, I've put a curse on you. You are going to die. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Now, <laughs> nervous laughter. That night, Vance Vanders went home and he went to bed. And he felt terrible. The next day, he felt worse. And he got worse and worse. His health deteriorated. After about three days, his wife was really, really concerned, and she got him admitted to the local hospital. In the hospital, the doctors couldn't find anything wrong with him, and they couldn't stop his health from deteriorating. So eventually, after a week, the wife was so anxious, she told the medical doctors what had happened and the story of the witch doctor. And the medic there was a guy called Drahan Doherty, and he went home that night, and he thought long and hard about what he'd heard, and he came up with a plan. The next day, he went back to the hospital, and he summoned Vander's family to his bedside, and he told them a story. He told them how the previous night, he'd gone back to the graveyard, and he'd found the witch doctor, and he'd choked him up against a tree until the witch doctor had explained how the curse worked and how it could be lifted. And he explained that inside that bottle that he'd wafted, there were lizard eggs. And somehow the guy had breathed in these lizard eggs, and they'd gone into his stomach, where one had hatched, and a lizard was eating him from the inside out. Now, if you're a patient, that's not exactly what you want to hear from a doctor. <laughs> Ideally. But that wasn't the end of the story. The doctor then called for a nurse to come into the room, who by prior arrangement had filled a syringe with a powerful emetic, so a drug that causes proper nausea, being sick. And with great spectacle, he inspected this syringe, and then he injected the contents into Vander's arm. Now, not surprisingly, Vander started vomiting uncontrollably, and the room descended into chaos. All of his relatives were there. And in the midst of the chaos, the doctor bent down and pulled from his medical bag something that he'd stashed there earlier, a great big green lizard. And he held it up and he said, look what's come out of you. 
you are cured. The curse is lifted. And everybody stopped. And Vance Vanders fell back into his bed and went to sleep. But when he woke the next day, he was fine. He was absolutely fine. And a couple of days later, he was discharged and he went home. Now, as far as we know, that is a true story. It was corroborated by four medical professionals who were alive at the time, one of whom wrote it up for a scientific journal. But the surprising thing about that story is perhaps the fact that Vance Vanders survived. There are many instances around the world where people have had curses or hexes put on them, and they have died. So if we think about this story for a minute, there is an element of the story that we're perhaps quite familiar with. That's the placebo effect. So the placebo effect is something that you've all probably heard of, which is the power of the mind or of expectation to make you feel better. It can be something as innocuous as a kiss from a mother to a child, or it could be a dummy pill in a clinical trial, or in this case, it could be a great big green lizard. But the placebo effect has an evil twin. These are my twins, about five years ago, and my big one, sitting in their high chairs with their Elvis wigs on, as you do. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that one of my twins is evil, but where there is a good twin, there is always a bad twin. Always. 